Good morning and welcome to another football focused session with Total Sports and Sports Science. My name is Nicholas Danieli and I'm a biokineticist at the Sports Science Institute of South Africa. Over the next 45 minutes, I'll be taking you through a football focused uh, training session. This session, however, is not exclusive to footballers, but all team sports and field sports will stand to benefit from this program as we're working on our hip health our knee stability and our ankle proprioception. If you can complete any of the movements during the session, I advise you keep going, keep pushing hard, but for whatever reason, if you are, are unable to complete these movements or are experiencing pain during any of these movements, please do not push through this kind of pain. If you are experiencing pain, whether it's in your neck, shoulders, lower back, hips, knees or ankles, please first consult your physiotherapist and complete their exercises before progressing with ours. Uh, we always stress that you complete all your movements in the full range of motion or full range of movement and with the correct technique. Rather slow things down and perfect the technique rather than rushing through our movements. Great, let's get going. For our equipment, what we'll need today would be a mat, an exercise mat, if you do not have an exercise mat at home, a large towel will work perfectly as the aim of this is just to prevent you from working directly onto the floor and also gives you a small cushioning, uh, especially for your low back. Second thing that you would need for today's session is an Eric's square. Uh, I understand not many people may have an Eric square, but a perfect substitute for this is a small pillow um, either from your bedroom or from the TV room, from the couch, just a small pillow will work perfectly for that. Third thing you'd need would be two small weights. I'll be using two dumbbells today. If you do not have dumbbells uh, readily available to yourself, two weighted uh, or two full water bottles or two five liter water jugs would be perfect as a substitute as well. The fourth thing that you would need for today's session would be a nice small step. Again, if you don't have a step readily available, perfect substitute would be a nice sturdy chair or ideally a couch, something that isn't gonna slide around and you know you can uh, trust that it's uh, nice and strong. A fifth thing that would be perfect to have just on hand, uh, more for some of the modifications, would be a weighted backpack, especially if you don't have dumbbells with you. The weight of the dumbbell of the backpack would be relative uh, to the individual and for myself around 10 kilograms for today's session would be perfect. First things first, let's jump straight into our warm-up. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're just going to run on the spot, just start waking up the body, uh, increase that heart rate, raise our uh, body temperature. So when you guys are ready, we're going to get going. Up onto the toes. Nice soft spring in the toes, absorbing that load. Waking up the calves, getting the arms moving. Almost there. And relax. Again, springing off the front of our toes, we're going to go into jumping jacks, full circles over our head. Starting to wake up the muscles in the shoulders. Three, two, one, and relax. Up into our high knees up in front, trying to get them nice and tall. Again, nice spring off the foot that's landing on the bottom. Let's go. And up at the back, get those hamstrings involved. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Onto the front of our feet 
knees again. We're going to unlock the knees and hips into a nice ready position. Two steps to the side, inside leg, touching the foot. Two steps to the side, inside leg, touching the foot. Nice and quick. Hamstrings and hamstring scoops, hinging at the hips, leaning back, nice straight leg in front, the weights on the bent leg, scooping through at the bottom, changing legs, scooping forward, as you're getting through you'll feel the stretch increase, once you run out of room just turn around, Continue back. And relax. Well done. Moving into our first section of today's uh, session will be our activation session or section. The first one we're going to be doing are what they call dead bugs. So for that, you're going to lie down onto your exercise mat. Using opposite arm and opposite leg at a time. We are first going to get into our starting position, into a tabletop position so your knees are directly over your hips and your shins should be nice and flat. The idea is that if you have a tray of tea or a tray of food resting on your shins, they should be able to be there no problem. If you drop the legs, move it side to side, then it's obviously going to be falling over. From there, it should be nice and stable, thumbs of tape are facing behind you, fingers up to the ceiling, core is engaged. Low, uh, low space directly underneath your back. From here, opposite leg, so if I'm going to left leg, right arm, extending straight up above me, straight down below, hold it for one second, back to the start. Changing sides, back to the start. Slow and control, we are doing five on each side, we are alternating, so that's ten in total. Let's go. Slow and controlled movements. Feel where your arms and your legs are. Get that body awareness. Keep that core nice and tight so that your lower back doesn't lift off the ground. exercise is going to be an alternating bridge for the hip flexor press. So we are activating the hip flexors but also the hamstrings and the glutes. For this, lying flat on your back once again, rolling your pelvis so that your lower back is flat into the floor, driving to your heels to get your hips off the ground, keeping your knees in line with your toes. So first of all we're getting up into the bridge, onto the heels, one leg is coming up, Pressing into the knee to activate this hip flex on our right side. Press for one second. Drop it down nice and controlled without letting your hips move side to side. Keeping that distance directly underneath your hips. Swapping legs. So now my left leg's coming up. Press into the knee. And swap. Ten in total. Five on each side. Control your breathing. Nine, one more, and that's ten. Next, we're going to grab our Eric's or our pillow, and we're going to move into our clock toe taps. So we're choosing one leg at a time. Standing with that foot planted firmly on top of the pillow. From here, you need to get your balance with your ankle first. 
Make sure that your hips and shoulders are also in a line. Knee isn't tracking too far left and right. Try to keep that in line with the toes. So there's three movements involved. Out from the front, out to the side, and right back behind you. Make sure you've got enough space behind you. First movement is similar to a single leg squat. So my other leg that's out in front, sitting backwards onto the leg that's foot directly into the floor, arms in front for balance. So I'm sitting backwards, reaching forward with this leg, nice soft touch with the heel, back to the start, standing up nice and tall. If you can, leave this leg off the ground the entire time. Reaching as far as you can out to the side, making sure this knee still stays over the toe, sitting backwards onto that heel. So sitting backwards, reach out to the side as far as you can, touch, all the way back, standing tall, and then the last one, hinging at the hips, push your hips backwards, reaching behind you as far as you can, keeping your, your hips nice and level, don't let them open up to the side, reaching back, touch your toe behind you, standing up nice and tall. So out to the front, side and behind you, count as one repetition, we're doing that three times on the one side, then three times on the other side. I'm going to move to the side just to demonstrate your side view, if you can join me now. First one sitting back, reaching front with the heel, touch, keep your balance, nice slow and controlled movements. Reaching out to the side, sitting back, touch, and up tall, and behind, touch, and up tall. Try to keep your back straight through the entire movement, pause and gaze. Staying on that side for three complete repetitions. Should be nine touches. Make sure you switch to the other side. Keep your ankle, your knees and your hips as stable as possible. Keep that balance. And relax. That's our activation station is now complete. Moving on to our mobility. The first one we're going to do is our adductor stretch. After that with the thread the needle stretch. There's a nice good rotational stretch of the upper back. So get onto your hands and your knees. Hands are directly underneath your shoulders, knees are directly underneath your hips. And you're going to stick one leg straight out to the side and you'll already be able to feel that you're getting a nice stretch all the way running down your leg. So that's stretching the adductors. If my left leg is out to the side, I'm taking that same left arm and I'm threading the needle through between this hand and this knee. Go as far as you can, slowly, slowly increase that stretch. Try to get your shoulder down to the floor. Hold for a second, opening up that shoulder all the way up to the ceiling. Nice rotation. And continue, we're doing five on each side. Nice and controlled. And switch. Focusing on your heart rate, focusing on your breathing. Between all of our sections, if you need to use your sweat towel or you need to grab a sip of water, by all means. is going to be a reverse lunge into a hip hinge with a reach. So choosing one leg at a time, as you're going backwards, we're going into our reverse lunge first. 
I'm going to take a step backwards with my right leg. So it's a step back, dropping the knee down to the ground, keeping it off the ground though. We don't want our knees making contact with the ground. Keeping your shoulders and your hips um, facing directly in front of you. So it's one movement onto the toes, keeping your chest up, back is straight so that you aren't arching the back. Reaching up, back to the middle, staying on that left leg in front. Now we're going into a hip hinge, so onto my left leg, hinge the hips backwards, small bend in the knees so you're feeling that stretch in your hamstring. Both hips are facing down, reaching forward in front of you. Drive the hips forward and reset. Down into the reverse lunge, into the hip hinge and reach. Five on each leg, staying on the same leg for all five, then rotating. Three, four, and five. So the last one facing you. Try to keep everything in a nice straight line so your shoulders are level, hips are level, knee follows in line with that toe. And relax. Last exercise we're going to be moving on to in our mobility section is going to be a sumo goblet squat with alternating knee drops. So for this, grab yourself your first weight. You're only going to need one of them. As the name suggests, we're going to be in a goblet position, which means you're grabbing underneath your weight on both sides, like so, making a goblet position with your hands. Elbows are tucked in, and the weight is always nice and close to the body. The further away you go, the more tension you're going to feel into your upper back. Keeping it nice and close to your chest, elbows tucked in. Going into our goblet squat position. So our toes are pointing slightly outwards, taking a nice big step to the left and the right. For our goblet squat, we are sitting backwards with our hips, putting the weight onto our heels. But our important rule now when we're going into our squat technique, knees always follow the same line as our toes. So don't let your knees buckle outwards, or buckle inward, keep them in that nice straight line. So from here, nice deep breath, pause engage. Down into your sumo squat, make sure you set before you go down. This is where you're holding this position up, the nice straight back. Alternating, dropping your knee, rotating on the front of your foot, rotating down, get that knee to touch the ground. So this toe is still pointing at an angle, but this is all now in a nice straight line. Back is straight, coming back up. It's just a touch on the ground. Alternating to the other side, rotate, touch, coming back up. Five on each side, ten in total. Let's go. Rotate, touch, and back. If you're struggling to get deep, just go into a normal squat, just rotate onto the toe, get your shoulders to face that way, coming back into that half sumo squat. Rotate onto the toe, get your knee facing down, shoulders facing to the side. Last few. And relax. At this point you can grab a nice sip of water, catch your breath. Moving into our stability section. So our first of our three exercises for our stability, we're now changing from our one set of five repetitions, we're going three sets of five repetitions for each side. So now we are upping the load. First one is going to be a wall hip hinge with the trunk rotation. 
We're going to do the same on the one side that we're going to be doing on the other side. But if I'm starting with my right leg closer to the wall, right shoulders against the wall, get up nice and close. So my hips touching the wall and my shoulders touching the wall. Lifting that right leg, the leg that's closest to the wall off the ground. Now all the weight onto my left leg, hinging with this, with this leg. So back is nice and straight, pushing my hips backwards, let that hip slide against the wall. So this knee is now in line with the toes. I've got that nice stretch in the hamstring, and both hips are now nice and straight. This leg can be in any angle, as long as it's nice and set behind me. Both hands are together in front. You should feel nice and stable in this position. This glute is activated. From here, we're going to rotate away from the wall, making sure it's not just our hands, but we're rotating the shoulders. It's only a small movement, and I want you to feel that contraction through the core. So getting down into that hip hinge pattern, chest and shoulders are facing straight down, everything's in a straight line, rotating out and back in. Five on the left, then five on the right. Breaths. And switch sides. Make sure you set before you begin. Small bend in the knee, hips pressed against the wall, back is nice and straight. Rotating the core. Nice deep breaths, exhaling as we're moving out to the side. And that's five on both sides. And relax. Moving into our next exercise, we're going into Copenhagen's. This exercise is there to strengthen and isolate the adductor muscles or our groin muscles. Perfect for our injury prevention, especially for those groins. So there's the full Copenhagen or the long lever Copenhagen. That's the more advanced exercise I'll explain first. Then the modification will be our short lever Copenhagen that I'll explain directly afterwards. So for this, find yourself your step and your mat. You're placing one foot, the top leg directly on top of that step. You want to imagine a straight line from your ankle through your knee through your hip, through your shoulder, and through your ear. So don't let your knees and your hips be bent. Everything is straightened out as far as you can, getting nice and long. Elbows directly underneath your shoulder, and I like to have my top hand out on top, just for balance, and it opens your chest up. From there, you're lifting your hip directly off the ground, everything in a straight line. This leg can either be in front or behind, that's your choosing. We're gonna be going up for five seconds at a time, three times. So from here, it's going up, legs off the ground, a straight line, don't let your hips drop. One, two, three, four, five, dropping down. One, two, three, four, five, dropping down. Third set again on that leg. One, two, three, four, five, and dropping down. Moving on to your other side, you're rotating over for your other leg, but I'm going to face you to show the modified version. If you've got a hard step, it's nice if you put something on top to just to cushion your knee, but now we are bending that top knee to 90 degrees. So the rest of you doing the long lever, keep going. Those doing the modified version, now you're getting nice and close. This technique stays exactly the same, but now you're bending this knee to 90 degrees. And your knee's pressing into the square, same rules apply, but now it's knee, through hip, through shoulder, through ear. Bottom leg stays off the ground, and we're going up. One, two, three, four, five, drop down, and up. One, two, three, four, five, last one. One, two, three, four, and five. Now that we've done both sides, Moving into our third and final exercise for stability, then we're going to go back to set number two. Moving into our eccentric calf raises. So eccentric means it's that control phase, um, phase of the muscle contraction as the muscle is now getting longer. 
As we're standing onto our toes, we feel that strong contraction, that's our muscle getting shorter. Once we're holding, that's isometric, where it's staying the same length. And as you slowly dropping your heels down, that's your eccentric phase where it's lengthening out again. So finding your step, standing up, get both of your heels hanging off the edge, and you want to put the weight onto the front soles of your feet, not just the toes, the front third of your feet. So it's two feet up, one foot down. We're going to do five on the left, five on the right. So have your hand against the wall for balance, standing up on both feet, take one leg off, slowly control, all the way down, let your heel drop below the level of the step. And you're coming back up with two. So it's two up, one down. Slow and controlled is ideal. Two up, one down. That's four. And five. We're tight, same on the other side. Two feet up, one down. Three, four, last one, and five. That's one set done, two to go, straight back into the wall hip hinge and rotation. Set your legs, hips and shoulders pressed against the wall, leg closest to the wall comes back, hinging on my left leg at the moment. Back is nice and straight, core's engaged. Deep breath in. There's one. Switching sides. Still focusing on your breathing, focus on your heart rate. Train yourself to be in control. Be rotating your shoulders to the side, not just your hands. And that's five. Moving into our Copenhagen's. Make sure we set before we jump into it. Knees pressed in, straight line, knees, hips, shoulders, and here. Elbows directly underneath the shoulder, arm out on top for balance. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. Rotating to the other side. Make sure you're happy with your body position before you begin. Knees in, legs at 90 degrees. Straight line, underneath the shoulder, and up. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Last time up. One, two, three, four, and five. Second time into the eccentric calf raises. Two up, one foot down. Nice and controlled. Slower and more controlled, the better. sides. Try to keep your chest forward, don't be leaning forward onto your toes. Chest is up. Three, four, last one, and five. Moving into our 
third and final set, back into the hip hinge. Deep breaths, keep going, keep going. Make sure you're feeling that stretch down your hamstrings, small bend in the knee. Make sure you're getting that nice flat back, especially in your lower back. Not happy with your technique, your body positioning? Reset, reset. Into your Copenhagen's. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Last one. One. Two, three, four, five, and switching sides. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Last time. One, two, three, four, and five. Into the eccentric calf raises for the very last time. Keep it up, keep going. Into the soles of your feet in front, make sure there's equal weight. Two feet up, one foot down. Drop that heel. First pushing as high as you can onto the one foot, slowly controlling it down, get that heel just past the edge and up. Last one up. And switch sides. Chest is forward, eyes in front, two feet up, one down. Last one up, and down. If you need, grab a sip of water, catch your breath. That concludes our stability section. Moving into our fourth and final section for today will be our strength section. Firstly, we're going to be going into what we call a Bulgarian split squat. So it's like a lunge, but we're elevating that back leg, which puts more focus onto that front leg, especially to the quads and the glutes. So if you have your two dumbbells, what you want to do is you're going to stand with them hanging naturally by your side. Make sure you're rolling your shoulders, make sure your back is nice and straight up in front. If you do not have dumbbells, this is where the perfect time is to grab your backpack, grabbing it on either side into that goblet position. So the weight is in front of your body in the center, elbows are tucked in in front like so, so that your upper low back is still nice and straight. But to demonstrate, I'm going to be using our dumbbells. So if I'm working my right leg first, my right leg is in front, I'm going to place my left foot behind me, my knee is in line with my front toe, both knees are facing forward, my hips are facing forward, and my shoulders are facing forward. Make sure that your chest is upright as possible. Try not to lean forward. Take a nice big step in front of you and you're dropping your back knee 
straight down to the ground, just so that it doesn't touch the ground. From here, core's engaged, weight is through the front heel, drop the back knee. Go for number five, and switch sides. To demonstrate, I'm going to face this way in front. Make sure shoulders and hips are level, facing forwards, and you're always on your toe at the back. Don't let your top of your foot rest, always up onto your toes. Keep that knee in line with the toe in front of you. Dropping that back knee. And relax. Moving into our second exercise will be our single leg glute hamstring raise. Perfect exercise to target those glutes and those hamstrings. Lying flat on our mat, getting our chair out in front of us. Sitting nice and close. Ideally, you want to get your step up to roughly 90 degrees with your heels, but a slight modification would be bending your uh, we're getting a lower step so that your knees aren't at 90 degrees. Easiest one will be flat onto the floor if you don't have a step at all. So for today, I'm using a low step. Knees and heels are in line, but we're only going to be using one at a time. Rolling my pelvis back so my back is nice and flat against the ground. Driving through this heel straight into the, into the step. Getting my hips straight up to the ceiling. Arms to the side for balance. Hip up to the ceiling, nice straight line between my knee, my hip, and my shoulder, and down. Driving to that heel, two, three, four, five, and down. Alternating to the other leg. Again, if you're struggling with doing it with a single leg, perfect thing to do is keep both legs uh, Pressed against the bench, using both heels at the same time. One, two, three, four, pass it up, four, five, and down. Moving into our third and final exercise, we're going to grab one of those dumbbells for weights yet again, and we're going to be moving into single arm thrusters. So for our thrusters, this is a power exercise, so we want to move this weight as quickly as possible, with correct technique, of course. So we're moving into a squat position, feet are hip distance apart, knees are in line with the toes, and you're going to be sitting backwards with your hips onto your heels. This weight is in one hand, in line with your shoulder in the front rack position, other arm is outside for balance, straight shoulders, straight hips, and equal weight on left and right foot. So going down into the squat, from here, all the power is coming from the legs and the hips, driving up. As we get to the top, it's one movement. Those weights are really moving up, assisted with the arm punching up to the ceiling, and reset. Going down into the squat. Three. And that's five. Change sides. And relax. Moving into our Bulgarian split squats once again. Grabbing both weights or grabbing your backpack. Toes on at the back, nice big step in front. Shoulders are locked back, dropping that back knee down to the floor. Drive to the front heel. And switch.
and relax. Moving into the single leg glute hamstring raises. One leg at a time, drive that heel into the step, arms out to the side, pause engage, get rid of the space between your lower back, drive that heel through, hips up to the ceiling. One, two, three, four, five, switch sides. Relax. Last one, moving into our single arm thrusters. Keep it up, keep it up. Front rack position, equal weight on the feet, chest is facing forwards. sides. And relax. Moving into your final set. Starting for the Bulgarian split squats. Using the back to demonstrate for the last time. Driving through that heel, keep that front knee stable. And switch. And two. Three. Four. Last one. And five. Last time with the good hamstring raise. Now, last time, single arm thrusters. Let's finish strong. Almost there. Front rack position, equal weight on the feet, controlling on the way down, driving up one movement. Reset. Five, last five. Finishing strong, let's go. Last one. And relax. Well done everyone, catch your breath. Grab this with water and we're going to finish off with a nice stretch. Thank
down onto your mat. First stretch for today, grabbing one of your knees, other leg stays straight, up to your chest and hold. Behind the same leg, grab behind the knee, straighten that leg out as much as you can, up to the ceiling, stretching out the hamstring. Keeping that leg straight, other leg straight to the bottom, rotate it across the body, swinging your hips across but keeping both shoulder blades pressed into the ground, arms out for balance, opening up your lower back. Deep breaths. Switch sides, grabbing the knee back up to your chest. Three, two, one. Grab behind the knee, straighten the leg out to the ceiling. Straight leg out to the side, across the body, keep both shoulder blades pressed into the floor, nice deep breaths. And relax, stretching out the groins that we used today. Both feet facing each other, touching in front, pull them nice and close, and I want you to sit on your sitting bones as tall as you can. From here, leaning forward to start the stretch, making it a little bit stronger by pushing your elbows down onto your knees. So lean forward, one, two, three, four, five, and relax. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. One leg straight in front, other leg over, nice big bear hug across the chest, stretching out the glutes. Deep breaths. Switching sides. And switch. Last one, stretching out the calves, up into your push-up position. One foot onto your toes, other legs over on top. Dropping that heel down towards the ground, stretching out that calf. And switch. Drop that heel down towards the floor, opening up that calf muscle. And relax. Well done everyone for completing today's session. Thank you for joining myself and Total Sports for this football specific program. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.